Pollution in rivers. How clean is river water? It depends on location. Mountain streams and isolated waterways tend to be cleaner than rivers that flow near or through cities. Cities have a lot of plastic waste and industrial waste. Rivers near farms have varying levels of pollution from fertilizer, pesticides, and animal waste. Physical trash, like plastic bottles, plastic shopping bags, and food wrappers, can be seen in some rivers. The amount of recycled plastic is small compared to the amount that ends up in rivers, lakes, and the oceans. Plastic is dangerous to wildlife and can collect toxins that also have a negative impact on people. Microplastics have been found all over the world's oceans and have been found in rivers, too. There is a large negative effect on rivers, lakes, and oceans caused by plastic. Chemical contamination includes fertilizers, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, and heavy metals above naturally occurring concentrations. Pesticides are useful in controlling weeds and insects. They are toxic to people and animals. When pesticides get washed into water sources, misused, or dumped, harmful health effects can occur. The amount of damage caused by pesticides depends on the amount, chemical formulas, physical and chemical properties, and the environmental conditions. Health effects include possible cancer, organ damage, and reproductive harm. Pesticides are broken down into smaller chemicals by exposure to sunlight, exposure to water, chemical reactions, microbial activity, or by plants and animals. Fertilizers enter rivers and lakes from runoff during storms and when water and soil wash into the rivers. Nitrogen and phosphorus are the primary nutrients in fertilizers that cause pollution. When high concentrations of these nutrients go into surface water, harmful algae blooms occur. Dead zones can form where algae blooms remove all of the oxygen from the water. This can kill fish, aquatic invertebrates, and shellfish. Some algae blooms are non-toxic, but block out sunlight and clog fish gills. Ways to minimize the amount of fertilizer entering waterways include reducing usage to prevent over-fertilizing, planting shrubs and grasses at the edge of fields as a buffer, and taking steps to reduce soil erosion. Water contaminated with heavy metals such as lead, mercury, and chromium can lead to serious health and environmental problems. General sources for such contamination are industrial waste streams and mining. Other sources include leaks and spills. There are some areas with naturally occurring high concentrations of heavy metals. The metals can be present in the form of solids or dissolved ions. Remediation methods for water contaminated with heavy metals are either chemical reactions, biological, physical filters, or a combination of methods. Temperature can have an effect on chemical reaction rates for the removal of toxins and can affect the growth of bacteria used to remove heavy metals. It can also affect the solubility of heavy metals present in the form of ions. Metals of great concern are lead, mercury, arsenic, cadmium, silver, and manganese. The health impacts for humans and animals include organ damage, DNA damage, disrupting cell function, nervous system damage, and cancer. Pharmaceuticals in rivers and lakes has increased in recent years due to the increased drug use and improper disposal of unused medicines. Drinking water and wastewater treatment plants do not have any way to remove pharmaceuticals from the water. This results in an unknown amount of drugs in almost everyone's drinking water and in rivers and lakes. The amount and type of drugs in water varies greatly by location. In some studies, 
chlorine has been shown to reduce the concentration of certain chemicals during treatment processes. Biodegradation occurs but has a vari highly variable rate because of environmental conditions and weather. There is a negative impact seen on fish and other aquatic life. There are numerous studies on the changes seen in fish, such as reproductive harm, drugs in brain and liver tissues. Amphibians are also at risk for negative health impacts. More research is needed to understand the impact of pharmaceuticals in rivers and lakes. The impact on humans is unknown. Ways to reduce pharmaceutical pollution include limiting bulk purchases, use drug take-back programs, do not flush unused medicines or pour them down the drain, and be careful about how you throw medicines into the trash. The packaging should be removed, the pills crushed, and sealed in a plastic bag with some water. You are supposed to add sawdust, cat litter, coffee grounds, or some other unappealing material to the bag. Environmental laws. The EPA and FDA have no current laws or regulations for the amount of pharmaceuticals in drinking water or wastewater. There are laws to ensure a safe concentration of heavy metals during drinking water and wastewater treatment. Industrial waste is not allowed to be dumped into rivers and lakes. It is required to go through a treatment process designed to prevent environmental contamination. Pesticides are tested for by local water treatment companies. When levels are detected that are too high to be reasonably safe, steps are taken to reduce the pesticide contamination in order to maintain safe drinking water. The EPA has set maximum levels of pesticides and heavy metals in drinking water. This table shows the maximum concentrations for heavy metals. Without a chemical analysis of river water, there is no way to tell how much pollution is present. Things like trash, paper, and plastic are easy to see, but chemicals can't be seen by just looking at the water. For a healthier environment and safer water, proper waste disposal and responsible use and disposal of chemicals and drugs is very important. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel.